Soon, workmen came to give the twins their numbers. Donald was nine and Douglas ten. When the men went away, they were left alone in the shed. Ye may have noticed, Juggy, that young painters forgotten something. What did they forget? They painted brand new numbers on the old tenders, but they put none on us. Donald winked broadly at his twin. You mean that we can? Grinned Douglas. Just that. Chuckled Donald. Keep it down. Here's the inspector. Now, nine and ten. Smiled the inspector. Here's Duck. He'll show you round before you start work. The twins enjoyed themselves and were soon friends with Duck. They didn't mind what they did. They tackled goods trains and coaches easily. For once, the twins had shunt them. Freight cars knew better than to try any tricks. We like it fine here, said Donald. That's good, smiled Duck. But take my tip. Watch out for Gordon, Henry, and James. They're sure to try some nonsense. Don't worry yourself, chuckled Douglas. We'll soon settle them. Donald and Douglas had deep toned whistles. They sound like buses, said Gordon. Or ships, snickered Henry. Tugboat Annie, laughed Gordon. Donald and Douglas cruised quietly up, one on each side. You wouldn't be making fun of us, would you now? Gordon and Henry jumped. They glanced nervously from side to side. Uh, no, said Gordon. No, no, certainly not, said Henry. That's fine, said Douglas. No, just mind the both of a year and keep it that way. And that was the way Gordon and Henry kept it. Every day, punctually at three thirty, Gordon steams in with the express. It is called the Wild Nor'Western, and it is full of people from England, Wales, and Scotland. There is even a special coach for passengers traveling to places on Thomas's Birch Line. When the other coaches are taken away empty, engines have to remember to send their special coach to the bay platform. It does not wait there long. Thomas, with Annie and Clarabelle, comes hurrying from the junction to fetch it. Thomas is very proud of his special coach. One afternoon, Douglas helped Duck in the yard while Donald waited to get take a goods train to the other end of the line. As Duck was busy arranging Donald's freight cars, Douglas offered to take away Gordon's coaches. Douglas was enjoying himself with an awful thought struck him. A horse or something cat doesn't find out I shouldn't be here. I couldn't abide going back. He worried so much over this that he forgot about Thomas's special coach. He pushed it with the others into the carriage siding, then ambled along to join Donald at the water column. Soon, Thomas came fussing. Where is my coach? Coach? What coach? Asked Donald. My special coach that Gordon brings for me. It's gone. I must find it. He bustled away. Gosh sakes, said Douglas. I may have stolen the special coach with the other ones. Ye see that? exclaimed Donald's driver. A mob of angry passengers erupted from the siding. They're complaining to Sir Topham Hatt. He'll be coming here next. Now listen, said Douglas's driver. We'll change tenders. Then away we ye, Donal, and take those goods. Don't worry about us. Quick now, do as I say. Sir Topham Hatt and the three passengers walked towards them. But Donald, with Douglas's tender, was out and away with the goods. Before they came near, Douglas and his driver waited with innocent expressions. Ah, said Sir Topham Hatt. Number nine, and why have you not taken the goods? My tender is away, sir. The driver showed him the tender, still uncoupled. I see some defect, no doubt. Tell me, why did number ten leave so quickly? Maybe, sir. Put in Douglas. He saw you coming and thought he was late. Hmm. Said Sir Topham Hatt. He turned to the passengers. Here, gentlemen, are the facts. Number ten has been shunting the yard. Your coach disappeared. We investigate. Number ten、uh, disappears too. 
you can draw your conclusions. Please accept my apologies. The matter will be investigated. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Sir Topham had watched them till they had climbed the station ramp. His shoulders twitched. His, he wiped his eyes. Douglas wondered if he was crying. He was not. He swung round suddenly. Douglas! He rapped. Why are you masquerading with Donald's tender?